Can we go through my results? Here Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what's going on? Oh, sure, sure. Do you want to pull them up so you can look at them too, or do you want me to share them on the? On just the... share because I, I, yeah, that might, I don't. Okay, know. I'll share it on your screen. Okay. Pull up my results right now. Let's see. All right, let's see it. I'm a little nervous. I'm, it, I oh, have to don't, see. don't worry, don't worry. I, you don't, you don't know the things I've seen, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> this one doesn't even have any pictures with it, so that's like a little bit sad. Oh. But, okay. Uh, but um, cause you know everything you know video it would look good it'd look cool and good on video. Cause uh, be... no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me uh, get it together here. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, great. So the way you kind of read this is that when there's a number and it's bolded, that means that we found something. Okay. So. So as you can see here, here's all these different parasites and cysts and trophozyte forms. We didn't find anything here in the protozoans. Okay. There's Because there's no number, no boldness, nothing here in the flukes, no schistosoma or anything, no tapeworms, and no roundworms. So that's good. good. That's awesome. very good. Okay. That's very good. Um, a lot of people are coming up with larval nematodes. So Would that's you? like a baby roundworm. Um, okay. And that's, that's kind of scary, but um, yeah. So fortunately you don't have any of that going on. Um, a lot of people, some people feel better when they treat it. Some people don't, it's really up to their unique health situation, but, but you don't have any of that. So that's cool. All right. Going on to fungi spores and common yeasts. So we did find a, so when it's a one out of four, that means it's the lowest level of a finding. So like a, a four out of four would be the highest, a one would be the lowest. Okay. And so you scored a one for Candida. So it the, the good news about this is that it didn't appear to be Candida dividing. You see how this is unbolded and there's no number? Yeah, Can I make would, that, should I make that bigger? No, I, no, I see it. Okay. Um, um, so what does that mean, dividing? So, so dividing would be like, have you ever made bread from scratch? Yeah. And how it has those bubbles and it's kind of kind of bubbling up. So it's not doing that. It's just sitting there like this. It's not, it's not getting, it's not having daughters and growing. So our lab considers uh, the general guidance that our lab gives to practitioners. So we have like a summary of findings along with this that you can read about. Um, and it has information on every single finding. Oh, okay. Um, so basically when it's not dividing, our lab does not necessarily consider it pathogenic. But again, that's general guidance. You got to work with your doctor, work with your healthcare team, and then apply this to your unique specific situation because we're all in a little bit different situations. Some are men under 40, like me. Some are women over 50, like maybe some people in your audience. So it's like, we, you know, and some of us are overweight. Some of us are underweight. We, we got to we got to kind of take these in context and it's another little hint in, in our puzzle and maybe it can push us in the right direction. I mean, I certainly, when I got my results for the bacteria portion of this, I was super motivated. I was like, all right, I'm finally going to get my, my stuff together and quit screwing around. So mm -hmm. some, so this is sometimes the kick in the butt people need because they don't like to imagine these things growing in them. They're like, Hey, what do I do? to starve it? What do I do to make my body resistant? And what do I do to kill it? Right. What are the, what are right. drugs I can get from my doctor, prescription drugs? What are potential herbs that might work, might be safe. So, you know, you just got to work with, with your people and come up with an action plan based on this in the context of your greater health, you know, situation. Well, so, and also what you eat. And, and I think it has to do with, with nutrition and the things that, that maybe hundred percent. For me, like with candida, which I know that has to do a lot with 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 sugars, you know, where where is it that I have to watch what I put, you know, what am I eating mm. that can be causing that number one? Um, you know, that's something I guess I don't know. I'm yeah, assuming. yeah, that's that definitely. I mean, I have this book. Let me grab it. It fell off my desk, but um, 
here, I have this book, uh, you know, The Fungus L Link by Doug Kaufman and, uh, and then also uh, David Holland, MD. Okay. And uh, so this is volume two. Th it's an interesting book. It talks about how, some of it's speculative. Some of it is based on kind of more hard science. Some of it's in between. Um, and it's talking about the relationship between fungi and yeast and some common diseases. And, you know, like he, he makes a connection about how uh, there's, a, there's an antifungal drug that's, that's used in heart medicine. It's like statins, like a class of drugs. They're used for, you know, people with some certain heart conditions, but it's also an antifungal drug. So it's kind of like, I mean, it's just seen. So he kind of points out some relationships like that. Really, I wouldn't necessarily go soup, buy in super hard to the first two thirds of the book. Uh, it's more the last third of the book where it's got a, um, an antifungal diet. So it's like part three. He talks about some various supplements. Let's see, what's, the, what's ex exactly it called? Um, here, I got it right here. I wonder if it's garlic. So, yeah, part three, take, taking back your health. Yeah, garlic garlic is part of it. Um, but yeah, so he has so he has like three chapters there. He has fighting fungi with exercise and supplements, the Kaufman antifungal program, the Kaufman diets. Wow. So when someone is kind of, you know, new to this or they want a new way to tackle this or they want kind of a, a more focused approach, then... I think this is a great resource uh, as a starting point. I mean, you always want to work with your nutritionist or your doctor and make sure that, you know, even if it's written by someone who's an expert and it's also written by a, a doctor and MD, it still might not always be appropriate um, in our unique health situation. Now, a lot of it's like, I mean, I don't think I, I, many doctors are going to say, unless there's like a specific drug interaction, they're not going to say, oh, don't eat garlic, right? Or you should, you should, it's saying you should drink less alcohol. You should drink more. Like no doctor is really going to say that very often. I mean, maybe you can like get a little wink with like, oh, drink some wine. It's got some reversatol antioxidants <laughs> in there. Like, okay, like a little of that. And then, hey, there's also like, we have to live, right? We have to, there's a, there's a big health benefit to spending time with friends, having a glass of wine, enjoying life, right? That's, that's, it's not just about the molecules going into our body, right? Our emotions and our, and our, you know, connection with others comes into play and, you know, having a glass of wine every now and then on a full stomach after you've eaten some nice protein, some nice salami and cheese, had like a new nice charcut charcuterie plate. Is that how you say it? Charcuterie, um, yes. Yeah. Have like a nice charcuterie plate. Maybe you got some like, and then you got some carrot in there because that carrot has those antifungal properties, antimicrobial, antiparasitic. So it's like you got some raw carrots, you got some salami, you got some some nice cheese, and then a little wine on top of that. And like, and you're having a good time. I don't think, you know, if you're looking at it from the whole picture, that's rarely going to be a bad call. But um, you know, it's a different thing when you're doing that once a month compared to every single day, right? Yeah. So balance. But um. Anyways, just going back to the Candida. So yeah, this, this I think is like a, an interesting book. Um, and then kind of the, the basic, if you look down at the summary of findings, we talk about the Candida mm -hmm. and um, the basic. So they talk about the treatment. So Nystatin, Diflucan, Nizoral, Nizoral or Sporonax. Those are prescription treatments you can get. Okay. And then we also have this thing, the Freedom Cleanse Restore. That's an herbal herbal blend, 46 different herbs. And, you know, I can also get you, you can go check that out. I'll send that over to you and you can, you can see what you think. Okay. Um, then they also talk about prevention. And again, this is general guidelines, but I think it's, it's a good starting point, but um, you always got to run this by your doctor. But so they say, avoid high carb slash sugar diets, minimize alcohol consumption and avoid antibiotics whenever possible. Yes. And I, and I think why they're saying that antibiotics, and again, it's when possible, right? You're, it's not worth your life. Or if you if you have a very serious infection that could yeah. kill you, right? You got to take them, but you know, we don't want to use them needlessly. And that's because it's going to kill a lot of our good bacteria. Mm -hmm. And then what's left? Oh, well, there's fungi and they can kind of grow back a little faster than our, our probiotic bacteria can grow back. 
Okay. So they can kind of maybe take over. So anyways, these are, these are starting points to consider to ask your doctor about. And, um, but yeah, I, I don't know many doctors that say, Hey, we, you know what you need, you need more sugar. So more, more carbs. I mean, outside of some very specific athletic situations. And even then it's like a little, but, um, anyways. Okay. So, so it's one of those things where it's like, I, you know, I want to be careful not to feed this, um, this dragon if I can avoid it. Mm-hmm. So that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of a good way to do it. Yeah. Okay. And then next, um, you came up positive for common yeast. This is typical. We typically expect this to be cryptococcus. We can't say for sure, but that's the most common yeast that is um, in humans and that, that has some sort of um, health significance. And this one was shown to be dividing. So, and I'll, I'll read you what, what they say about it. So if you look down on the second page of the, they say common yeast dividing. Common yeast dividing. When common yeast is found to be dividing in a fecal specimen, it indicates pathology. The number of cells is dividing and the infection will grow until properly treated. Again, this is really up to your doctor, right? This is this is guidance. The, the real purpose of the summary of findings is, is guidance for practitioners who aren't as familiar with it, right? Yeah, so this one is considered to be dividing. So we did observe this one dividing. So, you know, maybe that one warrants some sort of antifungal protocol. You'd have to chat with your doctor and see what they think. Um, the way I kind of look at these things is we can starve them out. We can deprive them of their favorite foods. We can make ourselves stronger with really good sleep. Make sure we have uh, the nutrients. You know, some of us are deficient on things like magnesium. Um, we can look at um, any prescription drugs we're taking, including, you know, birth control type things, hormone replacements, see if those are um, a factor. But I think really it just comes down to, and then it really comes down to food. What food are we eating? And then are we taking care of our sleep? And if we're doing those fundamental things in a way that supports our body and getting rid of these, that's, you know, 60% of it, 80% of it in terms of fighting it in the long term, And then uh, we can take some herbs or some drugs, prescription drugs to um, attack these things, beat back the infection. But, uh, you know, what if we're still living in our lifestyle in a way that's going to bring it back? Like, why did it get overgrown in the first place? Right. Because you might, yeah, you might fix it. But then if you continue doing the things that cause it, it's going to come back. So is this something that I can literally take to my, to my doctor and say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Here, yeah. And, and yeah, uh, this is good because then I, you can pinpoint the things that you're really interested in. All the other things are, you know, irrelevant, really. Yeah. So, yeah. They're negative. So yeah. then the doctor can say, well, yeah, let's just let's focus on candida and yeast. And then maybe we need to do this or this or this. And, and you just go with it. So sure. but at, like, at least you have you have something that you can bring to the table that says, OK, I got this going on. Right now, what? And, and yep. they, I think they should be open to that. Yeah, uh, like like a you know, I don't want to like BS you and say, oh, it's automatically every doctor think it's perfect. Uh -huh. I have heard of a limited number say, you know, we don't know this lab, so we're not going to believe it. More when it comes to parasites, right? You're, you you didn't come up positive for any parasites, but um, but again, it's like it's like how do you what's what's the Aesop's fable? It's like the wind, the wind blew. So it's like the wind and the sun, they have a contest and they say, how do I, I'm going to get the, the guy's coat off first. And this guy's, he's walking with his, his coat. And so he's walking along and the wind blows and blows and blows. And he just, he just, you know, covers up and holds onto it and keeps walking and he can't get it off. And then, so the sun just gently warms him up just, and then he just takes it off. Cause he's, you know, too warm. So it's like, you know, use the warmth and I don't know. I like, I like, it's a, it's not mine. It's Aesop fables. It's Aesop fables. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it doesn't it's, matter. I love how you told that. That oh, was good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, it's just, you know, it's like, uh, it's just, it's just, we just want to be respectful and, and respect the doctor's expertise and not try and, you know, undermine it or so, act like you're undermining it or act like you know more than them or something like that. So no, absolutely. I get that. That's, totally. that's, that's how, 
I, I try and I just find I have a lot of luck being persuasive in my life because I more and more like I used to give my brother advice and I wouldn't give him advice. I'd tell him what to do. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not giving advice. Now it's like he brings me a problem and, you know, it's back and forth. And I kind of ask him little questions instead of telling him what to do. And it's right. And it's a much better relationship now. He actually kind of doesn't, you know, he never hated me, but like, you know, he'll listen to me more because he, because I listen to him. So it's like it's a conversation. Yeah. So it's, you know, just re- respectfully show the findings, you know, don't throw it okay. in their face kind of thing. I think All that's right. the key. Okay. So, yeah. So maybe that antifungal diet might be something worth looking into. Um, you can talk with your doctor about the prescription meds. You can check out our Freedom Cleanser store cleanse, see if that might be appropriate in your situation. And, you know, just work with your health team on that. Um, and, uh, yeah. Okay. It could be something. Um, all right. And then next under other observations. So you scored a two on bacteria. This is probiotic bacteria right here. So this, this scale, this is good bacteria. So this scale goes from a four is too much a three is perfect, a two is adequate, and a one is deficient. So it's like a bell curve. So you're like on a two, which is adequate, but not perfect. And this is a good ba- good bacteria. Good bacteria. Yeah, yeah. This isn't like some pathogenic bad bacteria. Yeah. So like that's, this is like the probiotics that they talk about? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We have them free and clear inside our guts. Okay. Okay. We get them from our parents and from the environment around us around the time we're born. We get the first dose. So, and breastfeeding too. Um, so, uh, yeah, so you score, so that's considered an adequate, but not perfect. And then if you look down in the summary of findings, they talk about, um, they talk about the different scores here and basically What they say is um, in the treatment, if a patient scores a one or a two, they should either supplement with a probiotic and or adjust their diet to cut out sugars, starches, and vegetable oils and consume real vegetables, proteins, fats, and fermented foods and drinks. Avoid antibiotics whenever possible as they will deplete all bacteria and enhance the growth of candida and related fungi that will compete with the healthy intestinal flora for food and space. Did that all make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. And then uh, it talks about if the patient scores a four. I haven't seen a four, honestly, this year. So it's, it's not too common. What did I, ha- did I have a three? A two. Oh, two. I had a two. Three is perfect. Okay. Two's, two's pretty good. Pretty good. Two is like in between. Yeah, okay. Kind of so like at the borderline there. It could be better. It could be. It's it not It could optimal. be better. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're just kind of saying, you know, similar to what it was talking about with, um, with the with the uh, divide, or is it the common use dividing? Yes. Uh, so when they're talking about the prevention, let's see, not that one, but oh, prevention, avoid under uh, candida, avoid carbs, high carbs, less sugar diets, minimize alcohol consumption, avoid antibiotics when possible. Mm-hmm. So some, so both kind, two different findings are recommending similar things. So again, these are general, not for your specific health situation, but maybe there's something there that you can chat with your doctor about. Um, okay. Last, we have a two out of four on starch granules. So this is like undigested starches. So here, we'll go down to the summary of findings. What's that? Let's see. So starch granules are carbohydrates consisting of a large number of glucose units joined by glucosidal bonds. Uh, glucose is like our brain uses glucose and it's like a form of sugar. So, um, and our muscles use it as well, okay. not to mention other things in the body. Okay. So starch granules are often found in patients with maldigestion or malabsorption who are unable to assimilate and process carbohydrates adequately. Oh. These, these patients should minimize intake of coffee, tea, and fried and non-vegetarian foods. Avoid white bread and items made from refined flour. Digestive enzymes should be taken and biological reasons for malabsorption should be addressed. Certain parasitic infections, such as Entamoeba hysterolica, Giardia lambda, are known to cause malabsorption. So you test the negative for those parasites. Um, But but again, this is, you know, like they're saying right here, the summary findings is for practitioner informational purposes only. 
References to treatment suggestions refer only to common practices and are not to be construed as PCI recommendations for specific individuals. It is incumbent upon practitioners to decide on the treatment that is best for their patient. So again, just to reemphasize that this is sort of like the general landscape, but everyone's going to have a slightly different situation. So, mm. But I will, I will, I do see a lot of these, so I will compliment you. I didn't see any undigested tissue or the lab, I should say, didn't see any. So that's really good because that means that you're chewing your food well and you're digesting it reasonably well. It's just for whatever reason, these starch granules aren't getting broken down all the way. Okay. Uh, cool. So is that it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So nothing well, too crazy. Uh, it's not too bad. I think I can sleep tonight. I think yeah. I, I, yeah, this is, but I mean, it's so interesting because it's candida. I always like, I had this fear that there was something of that going on and well, I never had it tested and it's not sure. kind of cool to, to see it. Not that I like it to see it, but, but at least now I know and I can be a little more proactive in, 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 and of course the, the you guys have the, the, the herbs. Yeah, the Freedom with, Funds Restore. I can I can send one of those over to you. Yeah. Yeah, and so that will help. And of course, obviously, uh, take you know, having a good balance uh, in your nutrition and, and, and keeping in mind all these things that we just you just explained to me. Yeah. Well, it's like I mean, again, this is super speculative. I'm not trying to diagnose you or anything, but like no. you could sort of look at it like, okay, so we have these these yeasts over here. And then we have these starch granules over here. And what do you think the yeasts like to eat? Right. I'm Farms just saying. Sugar. I'm just saying, like, it's kind there of an interesting. Yeah. Again, it, is, that too, is that too simple of a con conclusion? I think definitely. It's not that simple. No, but but, but, it may, makes sense. but maybe there's some, some amount of truth in it. Maybe the, there's a small starch granule of truth there. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> but, um, Ching. That's a good one. That's a good way to end it. Okay. Well, so, so then of course, I love that everything is described at the bottom for me. So yeah. I can go back and I can really, you know, while I'm going to the bathroom, I can read all this. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that is the very perfect good bathroom time. material. Yes. Yes. Um, Better than a shampoo bottle. <laughs> I don't have any shampoo bottles. So this is all I have to read. <laughs> Uh, wow, I really appreciate Evan, you doing this because I just feel that this has really made me think about a lot on things, the way I'm approaching things. And, and, mm. and I think a lot of people would get really a good benefit for this because this now is making me want to know a little bit more about the specific things that you pointed out that came back with the results. Yeah, yeah, you could, you know, check out it, it, one, one way to go is you could check out that antifungal diet. You go on it for a few weeks, mm -hmm. see what happens. So absolutely, maybe it's way better. Maybe it's no change. Uh, you know, it's, you, it's, it's just, it's a pretty simple thing. I mean, I'm not aware of anything in there that's really like, okay, so let's just go over. I'll just read a random recipe. Tuna salad. Okay. So there's a can of tuna, plain yogurt, lemon juice, onion sliced, sea salt, jalapeno pen, pepper sh chopped, optional, and stock of celery. So that would be, you know, like a tuna salad. Like that's one of the sort of things they're saying you could, a little recipe that would be on, on one of the phases of the diet. So I don't think anyone would say that's, you know, going to cause problems for anyone but the smallest amount of people. No, because, no, because the yogurt is going to have the good cultures in it. And then the onion is going to be, I mean, there's just all this good stuff in there. So, yeah. So it's like, I don't know. So you, so you'd eat, you'd have to find, I guess the way I've been kind of thinking about it, because I've recently gone on kind of a, like work has been, you know, we've had so many new customers and that's been really great. But when the number of people ordering, you know, goes up by a lot from one month to the next, it's really stressful. <laughs> and uh, so I've kind of been not spending time with friends as much. I've been eating more sugar and, and it's like, okay, so if, you know, so if you're eating that, that tuna fish meal or that tuna salad meal, you have to, I have to go and find the sweetness in other parts of my life and not in the food. 
You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, and that isn't always easy, but but it's, you know, what we have to do in the long term for our health is, you know, find find the sweetness outside of our food, maybe. Absolutely. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, this, like I said, this was amazing. Thank you so much for uh, you. Oh, you, th- th- thank, thank you for, for taking the time to do it. I appreciate it. No, this is great. Great information and, and a wonderful resource. So thanks again. Well, yeah. Thank-